Sean Pickett with Sales Integrity. Thank you for stopping by the Sales Integrity Podcast. Today, we introduce a brand new podcast series subject titled Prospecting on Purpose. So without further ado, let's get today's episode rocking and rolling. Hello, sales achievers. Welcome back to the Sales Integrity Podcast. Did you know that according to a CSO Insights Sales Compensation and Performance Management Study, that a whopping 45.4% of salespeople miss their quota? So that means 54.6% of sales professionals produce enough revenue to meet their quota. And I looked back at the companies that we have worked with, and keep in mind this is companies that are in the B2B tech sales industry, if you will. They sell a complex technical product, service, or solution um, in a B2B setting, typically to senior executives and their buying teams, and it's a team pursuit sales cycle. It's complex and consultative and really solution selling based, if you will. Um, But in our experience at Sales Integrity and working with those types of sales organizations and those sales professionals, um, and also mapping this against research that's out there, and there's a variety of research on sales pipelines, opportunities, do sales reps have enough opportunities in their pipeline to achieve quota? But what we found is that um, roughly 60% of a B2B tech sales professional's sales pipeline, existing sales pipeline, uh, actually has qualified opportunities in it. So that means the remaining 40% are not qualified. They're probably not good opportunities to even spend time on and pursue, um, or they're just, they they haven't been put through the process of qualification and you just don't know whether they're going to make it or not. So when we look at that, you know, we looked a little bit further and if you actually remove that 40% just focused on that remaining 60%, what we found is that even if the sales professionals have a 100% closing ratio, which means they close every single one of those opportunities that are qualified, that remaining 60%, they still wouldn't have enough opportunities in their pipeline to achieve their quota. So we realize that this is a real big epidemic in sales. Uh, We work on that specifically in our coaching programs, but to me, this is the number one problem for sales professionals and sales organizations in all industries, um, but especially in those with a complex technical sale. And that, that those are the, the, the companies and individuals that we work with. So given that, uh, I am currently writing a book and the book's title is called Prospecting on Purpose. So again, it's Prospecting on Purpose. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because starting today, And moving forward, when I am delivering the monologue version of the Sales Integrity Podcast, meaning it's just me and I'm not interviewing a guest, I'm going to focus on this concept of prospecting on purpose because I believe that there are so many professionals, organizations out there that need help with this, that it would be a great thing to focus on and really kind of take components of the book as I'm writing this and talk through it on the podcast. The feedback I've gotten from a a lot of the people that I've surveyed and talked to and our customers and just those that I'm out there in associations with and networking on LinkedIn this kept bubbling up to the surface as their number one struggle, which is making sense of all of the prospecting strategies and techniques and tools that are out there. And you look, there's social selling and that's just in its monstrosity. It's a huge, it's a huge topic there. And there's a lot of moving parts associated to social selling. Um, Then you've probably read a ton of articles out there on LinkedIn and otherwise that talk about social selling versus cold calling and is cold calling dead what's the right way to do cold calling and what, what is the, the right time to do cold calling if you are going to do it. Um, and then what seems to be kind of a forgotten lost art is strategic prospecting and leveraging your network. And it, it doesn't mean people aren't doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm very certain they are because as we work with sales professionals in the tech industry, I know that's a huge component of it. Um, I've put surveys out there. We have a B2B tech sales professional group both on LinkedIn and on Facebook. So I've surveyed uh, folks there. And the number one um, tactic or strategy leveraged by, by those folks based on those surveys came back as strategic networking being the number one source of opportunities 
um, that they're finding that result in business for them. So that's very much alive and kicking, but seems to be kind of put on the back burner and all of the popular articles that are out there, they all seem to be focused on social selling and, um, and cold calling and those two kind of versus each other. Um, and then of course there's the emailing strategies and, and based on what we've seen in the industry, just the research we've done, this seems to actually be the number one tactic used by sales professionals. They're really relying on email um, and there's varying studies and stats that show it's effective, it's not effective, but all four of those strategies, if, if conducted and executed the right way, uh, could be very useful. So the, the overall program that I've created and the book that I'm writing with the title of Prospecting on Purpose, it's really going to be a, in, an entire system that you can apply. And kind of the working subtitle for the book, this may change. The title is definitely staying the same of Prospecting on Purpose. But the subtitle is going to be called this, How to Establish Credibility and Generate More Leads by Systematically Executing Social Selling, strategic networking, proactive calling, and emailing strategies. So those are what I call the four cornerstones of prospecting on purpose. Social selling, number one, strategic networking, number two, proactive calling, number three, and emailing, number four. Now, it's not necessarily in that order, but what I'm going to talk about is really a well-balanced prospecting approach that incorporates all four working together. Uh, I think it's dangerous when I hear uh, some gurus out there, self-proclaimed social selling gurus saying that cold calling's dead, it's all about social selling, get information out there, um, you know, get some, add some value, have trigger-based selling, insight-based selling, get, get a whole bunch of content out there, and then leads are going to come raining out of the sky. The reality is that's necessary, and that's why I have the, the very first thing I talk about is establishing credibility. Because a lot of the, 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 um, the sales trainer, sales focused, author, speaker, trainer, coach types that are out there that are writing articles, there's a lot of them I do respect. There's a good handful of them that I respect that are actually preaching this same concept that I've been preaching as it relates to prospecting. Again, which I feel is the number one challenge um, you know, and, and problem for all sales professionals that are out there is just continuing to prospect and have enough opportunities to achieve their goals. There, there are a handful of these folks that are out there that are talking about this well-balanced approach. So I'm happy to see that and pleased to see that. I think there's way more that are, that are drowning that out and kind of preaching social selling, content marketing only. And I just want to make sure that I caution sales professionals to do as much research as you can to, and, and go with your gut feel and your intuition. What really feels right? I mean, if you feel getting information out in the stratosphere and sitting back and waiting for people to call you is the right approach, um, then, you know, have at it. But I, I would just caution you that uh, your gut feel should probably kick in and the reality o meter should be going off and telling you that, you know what, it takes a little bit more than that. Right. So just keep that in mind. So really those four cornerstones, again, of prospecting on purpose is a well-balanced system of including each of these four cornerstones of social selling, strategic networking, proactive calling, and emailing strategies. So moving forward in the, in the uh, podcast here, again, when I'm doing the monologues, which are typically Mondays and Fridays, Wednesdays are the, um, the interviews I'm doing of sales thought leaders. Um, I might actually do have two uh, interviews per week. I'm starting to stack up some, so I don't want to wait too long before I get those out there. Uh, but just know that whenever I'm going to be, um, you know, doing the monologue version of the Sales Integrity Podcast, we're going to be focused on the prospecting on purpose. And we're going to dive in. We're going to do deep dives into each one of those cornerstones, again, of social selling, strategic networking, proactive calling, and emailing strategies to really arm you with some good tactics and some good actionable insights that you can learn from to tailor to your sales game and, and start applying in the real world of selling, um, you know, for you. So just keep that in mind. But today I'm going to set the stage for this prospecting on purpose series that I'm going to go through. Um, and if you have any questions on this, and I really would like to start answering questions as well, for our audience, and, and we are picking up a good audience as well, um, feel free to send an email to askshawn at salesintegrity.com. So ask, and then S-E-A-N, I spell Sean the Irish way, what I call the right way, uh, Ask Sean at salesintegrity.com. So if you have any questions on prospecting on purpose, 
um, those four cornerstones of social selling, strategic networking, proactive calling, or emailing strategies. Um, feel free to send them to me in advance and I can weave those into this prospecting on purpose series that we're going to do. Um, and then just keep in mind that this is good. It really has uh, three meaningful components to the prospecting on purpose program overall and what the book will break it down into three parts. Part one is going to be all about establishing credibility. Part two is going to be about systematizing, I'm sorry, systemizing sales campaigns. And part three is going to be about generating more leads. So establishing credibility, um, we're going to just touch on that today and then probably keep going with it moving forward. As we uh, move forward in future episodes, we're going to talk about system systemizing sales campaigns. Um, and then those two things really drive part three, which is generating more leads. And that means generating more leads than you're generating today. My assumption, and I know you should never assume, but my assumption is that you are prospecting and you do have a sales pipeline of opportunities and then you're doing that at some sort of frequent basis. What this prospecting on purpose program is about is being consistent and systematic in the way you're prospecting. I almost called this systematic sales prospecting, the book, instead of prospecting on purpose. Um, but I think that's getting, you know, that, that's a little, um, I didn't want people to think it was all about systems and technology because there is a mix of that. But I'm talking more about, you know, being purpose-driven in the way you're prospecting and really consistently doing this every single week, no matter whether you're the top sales achiever at your organization or at the bottom of the list or a newbie just starting off. Um, you know, the newbies, those that are struggling a little bit more need to do a lot more of this and dedicate a lot more hours per week to prospecting on purpose. But the best of the best, the top sales achievers we've had the pleasure of working with, they've never let their foot off that gas pedal of prospecting. They always prospected on purpose, even if it was a minimal amount of time per week. They just never stopped that to rest on their laurels because they had a big book of business and lots of clients and were really busy. So just keep that in mind, um, no matter where you're at in your sales career and your sales success journey, that you should always be prospecting on purpose. And that's why I like that name um, because it, 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 it keeps it top of mind to make sure that you're purpose driven and consistent in the way you're prospecting. So just keep, keep that part in mind. Um, the, the main thing when it comes to like today, we're going to focus just quickly on establishing credibility. So one big benefit of social selling is that it provides you access um, to your target market audience. Um, they're out on LinkedIn and LinkedIn's a real huge one. A, a bunch of them are out on, on um, Twitter as well. Those are seem to be the two primary tools, social media tools that C level VP level senior executives um, will we'll be there, right? So, you know, and make no mistake about it, back in the day, sales professionals had all the information, pre-internet had more information than, than the buyers. Today, buyers are well-informed, as well-informed as they ever were. And then I've gone through this in previous podcasts, studies show that um, they're two-thirds of the way through the sales cycle by the time they raise their hand and reach out to a sales professional. They've done that research. Keep in mind that they're not just researching the solutions, the products, the services, um, you know, to solve their problems. They're also researching you as a sales professional because they have access to you. They could do a simple Google or Bing search. Um, they could pull you up on LinkedIn. They could pull you up on Facebook if you haven't protected your data there. Um, they could pull you up on Twitter if you are there. And they can see what you're about. So just keep that in mind that you have the chance to set the narrative there on the information that you put out about yourself through LinkedIn, Twitter, even YouTube, if you have videos out there. So just keep that in mind. I'm kind of foreshadowing because I'm not just going to talk high level in this series, this prospecting on purpose series. I'm going to get into detail. Today I'm setting the stage. So we're probably not going to get down to tactics specifically, but in the future prospecting on purpose discussion series we'll do here on the podcast, uh, I will get into specific tactics and try and narrow down to one tactic, um, you know, per podcast episode so we can keep it succinct. It's a big topic uh, overall. Prospecting in general is a big topic, but I want to make sure that um, I'm, I'm provoking thought, getting you to think differently about the way you prospect. And I'm going to give you actionable insights that you can translate into steps that you're going to execute in the real world of selling. So keep that in mind. That's going to be our focal point moving forward. But when it comes to establishing credibility, um, the first thing that I'm going to focus on in the book and in the program uh, is all about that sales achiever mindset. Now, the good news is 
there's really four podcasts I've already produced earlier that you should refer back to. So I'm not going to revisit everything right here today. Um, but there's four that um, will also show up right away in the book as it relates to establishing credibility in, in part one. And the, the, the chapter one is really going to be all about the sales achiever mindset. And really episode number one, the very first episode of the Sales Integrity Podcast talked, it asked the question, are you a salesperson or are you a funded entrepreneur? And that really is all about that sales achiever mindset. So you should go back and listen to episode number one, the very first episode, if you haven't done so, because that really positions you to prospect on purpose, specifically as it relates to establishing credibility. You have to be credible. Credibility leads to trust. And customers, people will buy from people they know, like, and trust, right? And they can get a sense of your personality, and who you are, so they can get to know you through social media. They can get to know you through videos, through articles and blogs that you're writing, uh, through comments that you're writing out there and responses out in LinkedIn, let's say, um, to other people's articles or in groups, for instance. Um, so you could start to establish credibility just by um, having that sales achiever mindset and looking at your sales role, your book of business, your territory as your own sales business and that you're just a funded entrepreneur within the enterprise, that your company is your venture capitalist. They fund you to build your own business within their company. So that's what episode number one really talked about. So I'm not going to get into detail on that today. I just want to remind you of that. And, and that sets the stage for establishing credibility. If you portray yourself and in, in or convey the confidence of someone who's an entrepreneur and runs their own business, you're, you're going to do peer-to-peer -peer selling. They're going to look at you as someone that has equal business stature to them because that's the way you're, you're conducting yourself. So just keep that in mind. That's the first thing. Um, in episode number seven, we talked about the six core competencies of top sales achievers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on that here for a second because I'm kind of translating that to establish credibility here today. But before I do that, uh, two other episodes. One is uh, episode six, and that was the one where I said make your sales pop to achieve your goals. Talks all about preparation, organization, and productivity, and that's really what professional sales professionals will do. So not only have a funded entrepreneur mindset, but also uh, make your sales pop, you know, consistently prepare so you're organized and you're productive. That's also what it means to establish credibility and be someone who is credible. So keep that in mind. And then um, the other one is episode 16 when I talked about what it truly means to demonstrate sales integrity as a sales professional. So episode one, uh, six and 16 or three you should go back and listen to. As it relates to episode seven and the six core competencies, I'm just going to finish with this here today um, as it relates to establishing credibility. So you really understand what those top sales achievers are doing. The ones that have established credibility where clients and prospects find them, you know, through the credibility they've established through social media and social selling techniques, let's say. So, uh, first of all, let's just get into this. So, six core competencies of top sales achievers. Number one, top sales achievers know how to creatively get attention to connect with their target audience. So, they know how to creatively get attention to connect with their target audience. We're going to talk about how they do that and give some techniques. That's going to be an episode moving forward. Um, number two, uh, top sales achievers know how to establish credibility and trust as the go-to specialist in their industry niche. So when it comes to creating content, you know, not only conducting research, but creating content and getting that out there. So when they are found in, in when these prospective customers and customers research them, they're going to look at them as that, you know, go-to specialist in their industry niche. Uh, number three, Top sales achievers convincingly communicate value to positively influence desired outcomes. The key word here is, is value and that they convincingly communicate value. And again, that's going to come through value-based content they're going to put out there. And we're going to talk a lot about that moving forward in future episodes as it relates to establishing credibility. Number four, top sales achievers carefully create and successfully execute a winning sales game plan. What prospecting on purpose is going to be all about is a winning sales game plan um, as it relates to prospecting. So just that front end of the, of the sales 
funnel, the sales cycle, if you will, the overall sales process. So just keep that in mind that that's number four, that top sales achievers carefully create and successfully execute a winning sales game plan. Number five, top sales achievers control their focus to efficiently manage time and minimize distractions. It can be very overwhelming as it relates to prospecting. That's why it's the number one problem. People don't know where to begin. They're fed so much information. So my goal moving forward, and that's why I'm going to narrow the focus down and be very succinct in the future episodes for this series, this Prospecting on Purpose series. Um, but the real key is controlling your focus in efficiently managing time and minimizing distractions. So we'll talk about that as it relates to prospecting moving forward. And then finally, top sales achievers, the sixth thing that they do, uh, top sales achievers consistently execute weekly touch points to cause forward momentum. Okay. So again, they consistently execute weekly touch points to cause forward momentum. And this is really, really important um, as it relates to, um, you know, just overall prospecting on purpose. Um, the, the interesting thing about this is I did a little bit more research and HubSpot recently conducted their own research into sales prospecting and discovered two shocking facts. Number one, 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. So 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. Number two, 80% of sales require five follow-ups. So let me repeat that. 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up, yet 80% of sales require five follow-ups. So this is glaringly obvious, the, the takeaway here. This means that 44% of salespeople have an 80% probability they won't close the sale, right? And too often we give up after one follow-up email, despite data proving that multiple follow-ups are required, right? And persistence is only one lesson that can be learned from that statistic. So just keep that in mind as it relates um, to prospecting on purpose, you know, that six core competency of consistently executing weekly touch points to cause forward momentum. If your approach to prospecting is flying by the seat of your pants, winging it on a daily basis, and just kind of getting to it when you get to it or when you need to go find more leads because you've either closed or closed out or lost all your opportunities that you were working on, then you're not prospecting on purpose. So we're going to focus on how to prospect on purpose and really how to establish credibility and generate more leads by systematically executing social selling, strategic networking, proactive calling and emailing strategies moving forward. But that'll wrap it up for today's episode. That just really sets the stage. I wanted to provoke thought today and get you in the right mindset to start thinking about um, what you're doing as it relates to prospecting and your overall prospecting game. So the major takeaway today is to ask yourself one question. Am I prospecting on purpose? That's just the major takeaway from today. Ask yourself that question. Be very candid and honest with yourself. Am I prospecting on purpose? If not, the good news is we're really going to focus on this moving forward. And when my book comes out, then you're going to have a manual. It's not going to be kind of high level and pontificating. I am going to have research and some stats in there. However, it's going to provide a framework and it's going to act as a tactical playbook, um, complete uh, with, ex with an entire game plan and a sample game plan on how to do this and messaging templates and um, you know, a, a sample weekly schedule. And it's going to provide some really good um, tactical, technical data, including recommendations for tools and systems on how to automate a lot of things to save time. So keep that in mind, but ask yourself that question and I'll leave you with that. Are you prospecting on purpose? Only you know the answer to that. Okay, that wraps it up for today's episode. I look forward uh, to, to moving forward with this Prospecting on Purpose series. In the meantime, let's end today's episode with a few quick reminders. All right, reminder number one. If you haven't signed up for our free seven-day video email course titled Seven Steps to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling, then you should do so right away. Go ahead and visit mastercomplexselling.com. Again, it's mastercomplexselling.com. Reminder number two. If you want to ask a question and have me feature that on the podcast to answer your question, then just send an email to askshawn at salesintegrity.com. Again, it's askshawn, and I spell it S-E-A-N. So, askshawn 
at salesintegrity.com. Uh, number three, if you haven't already done so, please rate the show. If you've been listening a few times and you get a sense of what the show is about and you feel comfortable, uh, I greatly appreciate a five-star rating and a quick one to two sentence review. If you could do so on iTunes, just search for the show and then click the uh, ratings and uh, reviews and go ahead and just add it there. And then final reminder, if you haven't already joined one of our two B2B tech sales professionals group, you could do so on either Facebook or LinkedIn. Just go ahead and search for B2B tech sales professionals and it'll pop up and you could just join right there. So once again, thank you for listening to today's episode. Go out there today and help your customers buy what they want, what they need and what benefits them. And most importantly, go out there and make it a great day.